Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my wonderful co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing, ladies? Hey, good morning. What? That, I love that open. I That was a really great opening credits. I love it. I'm excited for our chat today. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm not. I'm not used to seeing myself uh, on an opening, so it's it's a uh, it's a little <laughs> weird for me. But, uh, you look good. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I want to uh, before we get started, I guess today I want to definitely give a shout out to uh, my sister in arms, Sergeant Major Julia Henry, for holding down the fort for me uh, last week on Chief Chat. You guys did a wonderful job uh, without me. Uh, y'all, y'all plan a girls power. trip to go fishing and everything. <laughs> But, we but yeah, this, so this, we missed you. No, but I miss y'all. I miss y'all. It's, you know, you guys are the, are the dream team. So, uh, but we got a wonderful guest today. Uh, so without further ado, Julie, please introduce today's guest. Chief, today's guest served our nation as an Army Ranger. His first mission was Operation Red Wings 2, in which he and the 75th Ranger Regiment faced a grueling search for 12 Navy SEAL casualties, eight downed night stalkers, and one lone survivor. After one of the deadliest special ops incidents in Afghanistan, he recounts his mission of perseverance in his new book, Leave No Man Behind. Please help us welcome Dr. Tony Brooks to Chief Chat. Hey. hey. Thank you for having me. Dr. Brooks, thanks so much for taking time out to join us and everybody watching. You know what to do. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Uh, share your questions and comments with Tony. We'll read those live. Make sure you follow our page and enable your notifications. We have great military exclusive guests for you each week on Chief Chat. Hey, so uh, I'm, I'm going to start because I'm big on protocol. So Dr. Brooks, Tony, What's your what's your preference on, on this call? I, I always go by Tony, so please go by Tony. Okay, gotcha. I don't want to make make I don't want to make things weird or uncomfortable for anybody. So, <laughs> so Tony, thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs> so can you tell our guests where you where you calling in from? Yeah, I, right now I'm in Redmond, Washington. That's just outside of Seattle, beautiful Pacific Northwest. Oh, this is probably a perfect time of year for for that uh, for that area. Yeah, it's nice, but it's also uh, it's actually really hot for this area right now. So I'm inside, and I'm happy about that right now. <laughs> We're in Texas, so we understand hot. <laughs> yes, yes, you do. <laughs> Tony, we are fast approaching the 20th anniversary of 9-11. You were a college student at the time, but ultimately, after the terrorist attacks, you felt called to serve your nation. Talk to us about your decision to enlist in 2003 and become an Army Ranger. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of us know exactly where we were on 9-11. It was obviously a life-changing event for probably everyone that's all everyone watching. But um, I was a very young college student. I was the first few weeks in college and it really hit hard. I was away from home in Tucson, Arizona. I'm originally from Northern California. And when I saw the TV that morning, as I was getting ready to go to the gym before my classes, I'll never forget the first image that I saw. And it was a little back falling off of one of the towers. And when I realized what it was, that was kind of the moment that instantly I knew that I had to be doing, I should be doing something different. And it was known as the falling man, basically someone jumping from, from the building. So that was the real, it changed my life. You know, I knew I was in the wrong place. I needed to do something more. And the army was my choice. So I got a follow on question on that. So what, 
what were you planning on doing with your life before uh, 9-11? Like, what was what was the kind of path that you were kind of on? Yeah, I, so I was in college. Um, I had a few ideas of what I wanted to do, but to be perfectly honest, I had no clue. I was kind of going <laughs> through the motions. I was in college just to get the degree, and I changed my major multiple times. I didn't know what I was doing. I was not mature enough to make that lifelong decision, but I was mature enough to decide I wanted to fight for my country. And being the young, emotional guy that I was, um, that's what I chose. Awesome. Well, thank you for your service, Devin. Yeah, thank you. And congratulations, Tony, on Leave No Man Behind, which was released this week for our viewers. You can find Tony's book tax-free at shopmyexchange.com. So, Tony, many people have heard of Operation Red Wings and lone survivor Marcus Luttrell. Your book gives a harrowing first-person account of the recovery of the team aboard Turbine 33 and the search for the Navy SEALs they had intended to rescue. So this was your first mission as a Ranger. What um, Can you describe what was that like for you? Yeah, I mean, I had trained really hard for this deployment, and it was one of the slowest deployments, I think, for the 2nd Ranger Battalion. So most of the deployment was spent training to be honest. And I, you know, as we were getting ready for this mission, when it came down, I didn't know what to expect. You know, I looked at my lead around me and they gave me guidance. And really it comes down to having proper leadership was what guided me moving forward. I was pretty naive, ready to fight and ready to serve and ready to help the guys that we were, were missing. Um, and I, I was willing to die doing that. But really, uh, I, at the end of the day, I think the people around me are the ones that kind of gave me that guiding light and kept me from want, so to speak. So, so how old were you uh, doing? I missed that. Can you please repeat it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so how, how old were you during the mission? Um, I was 22 years old when I went out. I had served uh, basically only in training environments up until that point. So that was my very first, you know, combat experience. And it was one that no one had really experienced, to be honest. So it was the largest rescue operation since the Vietnam War. And... You know, we did a fast rope in and it was about 110 feet, which we'd never trained on. It was much, much further than we were usually training on. So, you know, it, it was, it was wild. <laughs> Let's just say that. Yeah, no, I could imagine. So we, we've got the, on, we've had the honor to, of interviewing like um, a Medal of Honor recipients and I always kind of am intrigued about the age that they were when they, uh, you know, took on such a huge responsibility. And most of them were about your age, about 22, 23 years old. And I just kind of think back on myself when I was 22, 23. And I, I mean, like I said, we, we're trained and, and we, we step in and we do things, uh, you know, that we're called upon to do, but just kind of putting it in perspective, I was like, man, I, I was so ignorant and, and naive at 23 uh, even though I, you know, it, I'm trained and I'll go in and do whatever they want me to do, but just just thinking about my mindset then, uh, by you know my mindset now, uh, it's just it's unbelievable to me that you know a 22, 21, 23 year old can go in there and and do the stuff that we were trying to do. So it's it's awesome. Yeah, I mean, Chief, I would say that that's true with everybody. We're all a little immature um, in life. I I didn't think about life yet. Um, but I will say this, it, it, it's not about maturity on the battlefield. It's about the guy to your right and left. Absolutely. It's, you know, we're getting through this together. It has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with your age. It has to do with that camaraderie and the mission is greater than you. It's something you'll never find anywhere else. And, you know, the guys to my right and left, that's all that mattered in the moment. Absolutely. So uh, not only is the book 
called Leave No Man Behind, but you live by the mantra of Leave No Man Behind. So uh, can you kind of tell us what does that mean to you and what did it mean to you as a young man participating in this grueling rescue and recovery mission in 2005? Yeah, leave no behind. Leave no man behind has a big meaning. If I'm, I'm a healthcare provider, and you know I have young kids, and I kind of look at it as a way to approach life. Right? Nothing that we do in life should be done alone. And leave no man behind to me says we're all in this together, and we're out here to help you out. Um, if veterans that are watching this, service that are watching this. You guys need to stick together. There's nothing in life that you do by yourself. You know, all these very successful people that you see on TV and in radio and in books and things like that, they have these huge teams and a bunch of people supporting them. So don't ever think that you're going about this alone. Um, as far as, you know, that mission in particular, like I said, I was young, well-trained and ready to fight. And I had amazing leader i i just wanted to kind of get through the mission and wanted to see fellow americans come home and that's, that's really what the whole thing was about my book is really about humanizing that experience mm -hmm. it's it's not a political thing it's it's humans out there helping other humans that's what war really so that's what my book's really about mm -hmm. And like Leah said, you know, many of us are familiar with Marcus Luttrell's Lone Survivor story, but your story is from a completely different perspective. It's from your perspective. Why have you decided to share your story now? And what are you hoping that readers walk away with? Yeah, it's been many years in the, in the works. You know, it's not easy to write about some of these events. And ultimately it was my children. You know, I looked at my two young kids and thought to myself, am I ever going to be able to tell them this story? And I looked in the mirror and I basically came to the conclusion that I probably would never, ever tell this story to them. And to me, that was a huge, they should know it. And that's why I started to write the book. And since then, you know, I've, I've written it for the people that were on that mountain, you know, my fellow, fellow Rangers out there that um, never had their story told and they've been holding it in as well. They've had the same struggles I've had. So telling that story is important. I think telling any story is important. So that, that's really the impetus of really where this came from. Wow, and um, just just how you're talking and, and what you shared about your children. So this book is deeply personal. So you also shared photos throughout that as well. What what did that mean to you to share your personal memories and journey with everyone? Yeah, it's very interesting because when I first, I, I've written this book multiple times over. And the first time <laughs> I wrote it, it wasn't personal at all. So my co-author, uh, Bob Welch, who deserves to be here, he really pulled the, the my story out of it. I was telling a history event and he said, no, 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 you need to tell your story, not the story, your story. And he really pulled it out of me. So I, I can't really take credit for, for that, but it's, um, it's definitely, you know, lifting the veil on your life for everybody to know. Um, I have, you know, family and friends for me saying, I didn't know that about you. Um, so it's, it's definitely something I've never experienced. Um, but well worth it. Oh yeah, so I mean, and I, I can totally understand uh, your perspective because uh, it's just a lot of things that in life you just don't wanna talk about. And, um, but the, the thing is, is it's probably best to talk about it, A, for, for your you know mental health and resiliency, uh, to just get that off your chest. And also, like you said, for your brothers and sisters in arms who who have share the same sentiments, but they feel like they have no outlet to to talk about uh, what they went through, or so I'm I'm you know big big shout out to your co-author for kind of pulling that out of you and sharing with the world. Yeah, Bob was great. Bob um, basically gave me that pep talk 
and said, Tony, people are going to want to know about the person writing this thing. They, they, yeah, the story interesting and they want to know the story, but if they don't know who's writing it, they, they're going to put it down and they're not going to read it. So I had to get in there and share all my weaknesses and my strengths and how nerdy I am. So it was fun. <laughs> so, so in your book, you talk about how less than 1% of Americans serve in our military. So what advice would you give to young men and women considering a life of service to our nation? I'd say, you know, right now I'm a, I'm a chiropractor. I have my own clinic. Um, I work for myself. I have a great life, but I wouldn't have that great life if I didn't learn about life uh, with service. I feel like every single thing I learned in the military made me a better person. Was it easy? No. Was it fun all the time? No. But it definitely, you know, built a foundation for me to move forward with. And I, do, I don't think I would have had that just going through college. So if anyone's out there considering, I would say it's a, a wonderful opportunity to grow as a human. So I would highly recommend it to, to anyone. Tony, you touched on this a little bit, but talk to us about life after the military. Understand that you said you are in healthcare, you're a chiropractor. Um, what has life been like for you since uh, you left the service? I definitely have a new perspective on life, that's for sure. Um, I don't waste any moments. I love to be around my family. I cherish those relationships and I learned, I know what hard work is because in the military, you learn what hard work is. You learn that, you know, working for seven is a real thing. You can actually do that. And <laughs> I, I, and it actually helped me later in life to understand that I didn't want to do that my whole life. Um, I wanted to do other things besides work. So I, you know, after the military, I've really focused on my family and my relationships and health. Health has always been my number one priority. And, you know, that's how I found my career. So find your passion, follow it. And that's what life after the military is all about. Yeah, yeah. You talk about your, your new career, man. My, my back is stiffening up just talking to you. So I, I'm happy to come <laughs> check you out in Washington State, man, because, oh, man, I, I've been looking for a good chiropractor. Well, I got good news for you, Chief. My family and I are moving to Texas, actually, as okay. we speak. So we won't be that far away. We'll be uh, in Montgomery, Texas. Awesome, man. Okay. Uh, well, hopefully my back can last that long on the drive. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tony, in No Man Left Behind, you talk about coming home and how you hope for people to ask you, what's your story? So thank you for sharing your story with us. Um, what else would you like our viewers to know about you and your fellow Rangers who took part in Operation Red Wings? I, I just like them to know that they're, the soldiers are not the war. And the soldiers are the people that are gonna be in your neighborhood. They're your baker, your chiropractor, your police officer. So, you know, as much as I would like to, I don't like war, I would say that's okay. You, you don't have to love war to love the soldier or this member. And I, I, will, I just want people to humanize that person. You know, they are not the political theater that put them there. They are there for you and me and their left and right and love them. That's what I want people to, to do. <laughs> Man, no, that's awesome words. Awesome. The heartbeat of America. So thank you very much for allowing me to be at home and, you know, doing what I love. Um, there's always some, something than ourselves. That's what I'd like you to know. So when you're feeling down, when you're feeling happy, just keep that mission or the, the greater good at the top of your mind because if we're all working something greater than ourselves, 
anything can happen. And I learned that on the battlefield. I learned that in Operation Red Wings too. I could have never done that mission by myself. I probably would have quit. And it's hard to say that because I don't like to quit. But it was the men and women around you that are really going to guide you. So keep those people close. Tony, those are great words of inspiration for, for all of us, um, civilians and service members alike. We're going to turn to our live Facebook feed, and I wanted to just share with you that you're getting a lot of um, reaction, a lot of likes and loves on Facebook, and I wanted to just let you know that we do have people watching. Caroline says she's also from Washington, and that's where she's watching from today, and Anne uh, Rodrigue Jower says, thank you for your service. Caroline also says, thank you for serving. Celia Anthony, she thanks you as well. And Sandy says she's enjoying this live interview very much. Outstanding. Thank you for all watching and, and I hope you're having a wonderful day out there, especially you in the Northwest. <laughs> And before we say goodbye, we just want to remind our viewers that it matters where you shop. Leave No Man Behind is available tax-free at shopmyexchange.com. Tony, where can we go to find out more about you and your book? If you go to drtonybrooks.com or drtonybrooks.com, you can follow me there. The book is available wherever books are sold, but obviously you got to buy it from AFES, right? Absolutely. Um, tax free. Absolutely. Yeah, get it, get it shipped <laughs> to you. Yeah. And um, I, I hope you all enjoy it. Please reach out to me. I love to hear your stories as well. Don't hold those in. It's not going to help. It's a it's a terrific read. I really enjoyed. I enjoyed the book. I enjoyed hearing your story and um, seeing the the photos too. That really made it personal. Thank you for sharing those. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for reading it. Thank you for your feedback. I love it. Awesome, Tony. So, Tony, today you've really uh, given us some really uh, great words of wisdom um, about especially about, you know, there's a lot of craziness that goes on uh, throughout the country, a lot of politics, a lot of different things. But just understanding that, you know, I, I'm serving because of the the man or woman to my left and right and, and um, making sure that, that I got their back. I'm training my replacements. It's a human thing. So uh, thank you for reiterating that today in today's interview, because, uh, and, you know, I think some people get caught, caught in all the, the, the clickbait and, and, the, and the, craziness, the craziness that goes on on social media and on the news and stuff. Uh, but at the end of the day, man, you got your brother and sister that's willing to willing to die for you, um, that you work beside every single day. So uh, that's an awesome perspective. And, and, you know, that's that's what that's going to be my takeaway uh, from this interview. So thanks for re reiterating that. Your country, but love your brother and sister more. <laughs> so, uh, you know, like I said, thank you for sharing your story with us. We had a wonderful interview with you today. Uh, this means a lot to America's airmen, soldiers, guardians, sailors, Marines, and Coast Guard members. And we appreciate you. And uh, we, we're looking forward to you moving to Texas so you can get some of those nice chiropractic services going on. And, 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 uh, and it's going to be hot as well. So you're, you're moving from a hot place. Well, I heard about Washington had like some record temperatures this year or something crazy, which, uh, yeah, that, that's a whole nother story in itself. But, uh, yeah, we, we're welcoming you with open arms here in Texas. Well, thank you for that. I get there. My family's already out there. So I, I'm looking to Charlie. Awesome. Awesome. So we wish you all the best and, uh, everybody out there go check out, Leave no man behind on shopmyexchange.com. Uh, with that being said, uh, we're going to wrap up the interview. And uh, it was a pleasure, Tony. Thank you very much. And Chief Chat out. Chief Chat out. Bye, guys. Thank you. Hello? Hello?